everything is going to be all right. It's all right now. Yes, it is. Daddy's outside and he's chopping some more wood and he's only a few feet away. Yeah, and he's going to keep this fire going for us. And then he's going to come back inside and we'll all be here safe and snug and warm. And you're safe now. I promise. I won't let anyone take you away from us. Ever. There. Hello, Alec. Chase? Chase told me you were home. Welcome back. Thank you. How are you? You look great. Thank you again. <laughs> so do you. Um, but, but I'm supposed to be here taking your order. Please, sit down. What can I get you? Uh, make it two beers, huh? Oh, yeah, it sounds fine. In fact, why don't you make it three and join us? No, no, I can't. I... Well, I've got a lot to do. Oh, Big has you back in action already, huh? Smart man. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's temporary, but who knows. Two beers, coming up. <coughs> she looks terrific. Really sensational. Yeah. She does look good. Look, uh, I think I'm gonna split, okay? Why? Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, don't do this to me. What? I'm tired. It's been a long day. Uh huh. If, it, if it's been such a bad day, how come you ordered two beers? Unless... Unless what? What, what, what have I done this time, huh? As if you didn't know. You order two beers and then you cut out on me. Now, who is going to drink the other one? That is not what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I'm tired. It's been a long day. I... I changed my mind, that's all. No, I, I don't want you controlling my life. I told you that before. Oh, Alec, I am not trying to control anything. I just want to get out of here and get some rest. And you're not trying to push a day and me together again, are you? The only thing I'm trying to do is to get some life back into these bloodshot old eyes. Can't you see how tired I am? Like, come on, tomorrow's going to be a rough day. Dad's coming out of the hospital is going to take a lot out of all of us. If you think that's going to be easy, you better think again. You're right. I, I overreacted. I guess it's... I guess seeing a dare again. All right, forget it. No harm done. So, are you going to come along with me or are you going to stay here? Uh, no, I think I'll stay. Oh, all right. Um, I'm sorry I misread you. Skip it. See you later, okay? Yeah. You can deny it all you want, but I can't be wrong. There has to be a special someone in your life. I don't know why you keep saying that. There isn't. Then let me have your secret. Cheeks as rosy as that don't grow on vines. I'll be betting you say that to all the Irish lasses. <laughs> Looks like you lost the customer. How about changing your mind and joining me? Things don't look too busy. Think you can risk it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so. For a little while, anyway. Ellie. Look, uh, driver, could you please go just a little faster? Yeah, I'm getting the message, lady. 
But you're only going 40 miles an hour. You can go just a little bit faster. Now, if we want to get there in one piece, it's as reckless as I'd get on two lanes. Who are you going to see out here anyway, a hermit? <laughs> my husband, my husband, and my baby. Way out here? What a place to live. You might pardon me for asking or making a mention of it, but you don't look like the type. Well, actually, we're setting up a new home. Somewhere else. I see you two uh, split up. I see you, you split up and he gets custody, am I right? You two must be crazy to want to go through all that again. Crazy in love, I'd say. Yeah, we are. Oh, very much in love. He's the only man in the world for me. Three of us are going to be so happy together. Uh, good for you. I'm all for reconciliation. But let me ask you something. How come he gets custody of the kids and you don't? I mean, do you travel around too much or suffer? The reason I ask is because I picked you up out the airport. Yeah, something like that. All I know is that tonight, the minute we step foot on that plane, it's going to be a new beginning. You're going back to the airport tonight? Well, I hope your hubby's got a car. <laughs> I'm not going out back out there tonight. Wait a minute. But if you don't understand, my husband and my baby were supposed to meet me at the airport. They must have had some kind of car trouble or something, or they would have been there. You might have to drive us back. You might have to, or, or, Wait, or we might miss our I'm flight. I'm drive way back out to, to the airport tonight. Look, you have to. We'll be stranded. I'm sorry, lady. There's nothing can make me pick up another cab fare tonight. Absolutely nothing. Oh, yeah? Well, that's what you think. I beg your pardon? That's what you think. You haven't met my husband yet. Uh, look, I don't care if he's the guy's Bruno San Martino. I'm dropping you and your luggage off. Uh, that's it. Don't threaten me, lady. Huh? Listen to me. You will do as my husband says, and that is that. Okay? Do you know where we are yet? Yeah. At the next intersection, make a left. <laughs> I've been along dirt roads like this, and a night like this, it's pitch black out there. I can hardly see 20 feet in front of me. Look at that speedometer. 30 miles an hour we can barely do. We'll be out here like this all night, possibly, chasing after a ghost. Face it, Bowman. You're much too good a policeman to be passing up an opportunity like this. I mean, you'd not only be stopping a possible murder, you'd also be apprehending an escaped con and murderer and conspirator to framing an innocent... All right, already. The only reason I went along in this wild goose chase was to keep tabs on Susie Wyatt, my prime suspect in the just encountered attempted murder case. And by the way, if she's at this cabin, has violated the conditions of her bail. How did she do that? Well, we passed the state line about 10 miles back. <laughs> Sign was a little dark to read, I admit, but nonetheless... Oh, unless we both forget, there is an added bonus to this trip if your hunch is correct. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. I'll be in a position to apprehend McCleary for breaking and entering. You really have it in for Cagney, don't you? Me? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come about. on. You know as well as I do that everything Cagney's done, he's done for Susie uh -huh. because he loves her. Including robbing his employer of 20 grand? That was set up by Warren Carter. I told you, Cagney was framed. Ah, uh, again with Carter. What are you people going to do when you find out he's really dead and couldn't possibly be behind all of this, huh? Who are you going to dig up to blame it on then? Everything I have told you points to the fact that Warren Carter is still alive. Why won't you even consider it? Oh, I will. I will. As soon as you admit that you rush to believe McCleary's story just because you're a friend of the family. I believe Susie and Cagney because it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. The warden of Milbrook pronounces that the body of a man killed in a fire is Warren Carter's because he's wearing his wedding ring. Give me a break. Look, McCleary has done nothing but hinder this investigation. And you have a chip on your shoulder when it comes to the McCleary's. I what? Yes, you do. You grew up in the same neighborhood with him. Now, God knows what score it is you're trying to settle by trying to throw Cagney behind bars. But you certainly try every chance you get. Look. I have never pursued the guy except for anything that was warranted. Oh, I hear you, Lieutenant. Loud and clear. Uh, look, he's the one that's constantly placing himself in a position to be arrested, oh, not me. Oh, I know, I know. And another thing. The only reason I never threw the book at him for playing Sherlock Holmes when I asked him not to time and time again was out of a... Uh, out of the... friendship and respect I have for Hogan. It kind of sticks in your throat when you say it like that, doesn't it? So? I'm not the kind of guy who can say something easily about another guy, so what? But I... I meant what I said. Well, if 
that's the case, then do me a favor and stick by your friendship for Hogan one more time. At least consider the things that I've told you. And when we get there, have your gun ready instead of an accusation. If we get oh, there. Oh, you can joke about it all you want to, but if Warren Carter's alive and at that cabin the way I think he is, you're going to be very glad you have it with you. Oh, I'm certainly glad I decided to drive my own car. <laughs> Crummy roads. Drop the wood, don't try anything funny. Stand up. What are you doing here, Warren? You're not surprised to see me? I'm crushed. I'm here to get my son. Now, you listen carefully, Cagney, because I'm only going to say this once. Walk ahead of me, slowly. Come on! Want to make it easy for me to kill you? How did you stage your own death? Skip the melodrama, let's go. No, I mean it. Very impressive. I figured out everything else you did. Did you? But that part escaped me. For the last time, Walker, you're dead. And believe me, it'd be a pleasure to put you out of your misery. My cap. Forget the cap, you don't... <coughs> Jonah? Daddy. Hear that? Cagney's finished chopping, chopping all that wood. And it's about time. That fire's about to go out. Here you go. stuck around for a couple of weeks after Hogan left for uh, Africa, and then I just decided it was time to come home. I'm, I'm glad you did. Look, I, I didn't mean any... Sounds like the whole thing was a, a good experience for you. Yeah, a lot's happened to you, too. Congratulations on finding your sister. That must have come as a surprise. Yeah. Who told you about it? My mom. We kept in pretty close touch, you know, letters and phone calls once in a while. Sometimes I think back on all the time that T.R. and I spent together. And I wonder why it never occurred to me that she could be Rebecca. You know, why would it? And your dad, how's he doing? Better. He and I are full of plans for when Becca comes home to live with us. We've been talking to decorators and thinking about fixing up the room, buying furniture, that kind of thing. Chase tells us not to get too anxious. What about, about... his eye? Uh, is it healing? Yeah, it's better. He's going to be home tomorrow. Great. Oh, you must be real excited. And uh, what about med school? Is that everything you thought it would be? And more. Much more. In fact, sometimes I think too much more. No matter how much work people tells you, tell you there is, it's only the tip of the iceberg. But you like it? I love it. In fact, what I love about it surprises me. Such as? Such as I'm on my own path now, and away from my brothers. I, I have to get back to work now. It was real nice talking to you. Well, wait a second. You haven't told me about you. How are you, really? Oh, I'm, well, I'm about where you are. Um, just happy to be living my life in the direction that I want it to go in. Have you made any plans? Some. They're not as, as concrete as yours are. But I can safely say that they are my own. Can you tell me about them? Oh, 
well, I'm, I plan to work and uh, make, make some money and save. Go back to school. Well, what are you going to study? <laughs> like I said, they're not as definite as yours are. Well, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I know. What? Standing on my own two feet is really important to me right now. What, I said something funny? No, 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 not at all. It's just... Standing here and talking to you, it feels... It feels really awkward. I, I, it feels odd. Yeah, I know. It wasn't very long ago that... We talked about a lot of things together. We were never awkward with each other. We were... We were comfortable together. We've changed. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I didn't expect you to answer that. It was really just a statement of fact. I don't want you to think that I'm going to be, you know, hanging around and, and interrogating you the way I used to. I... I won't. You don't owe me any explanations about anything. Good. No pressure. I'm glad. Well, I got, I've got to go. I wish you luck, Alec. you an apology. Uh, you don't owe me nothing except what's on the meter, lady. Yeah, well, I'm really sorry I yelled at you. I've been under a lot of stress lately. I'm, I know that's no excuse, but I do think I should apologize. My husband would never do anything to hurt you. Um, I was just blowing off some I steam. I think I got the solution for both our problems. You do? Yeah, I was going to mention it to you anyway, apologies, you know, but hearing you say that makes it a whole lot easier. What, what, what is it? What are we talking about? About the round trip back to the airport. If and when we find your husband, if you still want to do it, I'll take you back for a hundred. hundred bucks? Bucks, dollars, simoleons, whatever you want to lay on me. That's the tariff. That, uh, too rich for your blood? No, no, no. No, it's fine, considering. Good. Well, now, look, all kidding aside, do you have that much on you? Any cash? American? No, um, look, I, I don't, but my husband will. He... He thinks of everything. That's good to know. Anyway, we'll soon see, because we're almost there. understand why that thing isn't coming off. It's stuck! Oh. And while you're at it, would you mind holding the light where it would do some good? Like on the wheel? I'm sorry, I thought I was. Trust me. There, how's that? Is that better? Uh, no, over here. There you go. Sorry. Uh. Look, how long do you think this is going to take? I'm sorry, but every minute that we delay is very dangerous for Susie. Do you mind? Can I help? 